friends, what's going on? So a quick warm up exercise I wanna show you today, right? This is one based off of the D, C add nine, and G chords, okay, which are very common chords played in that order. They're used for tons of songs. And in this exercise, I wanna show you how uh, there's two songs, Thank You by Led Zeppelin and Can't You See by Marshall Tucker Band, which is what I'm learning now. Both use uh, variations of these chords in a like identical way. And I put together this little warm-up exercise based on this sort of sequence, because even if you're not interested in those two songs, this little uh, sequence of those three chords with the modifications I'm gonna show you can make for a fun way to warm up, a fun way to just strum and have some fun. And it also can be helpful uh, when you're learning other songs that use these chords. So let's dive on in uh, really quick and uh, I'll teach you the chord voicings, I'll show you the fingering, and I'll show you the tab that makes up this exercise. And as always, I have a PDF of all these song notes uh, written up and it's available through my website, playsongnotes.com. It's a great way to sort of uh, really get into this exercise and take it with you as you learn these songs or you just wanna add a cool uh, warm up exercise to your repertoire. So. Uh, Let's get into this one. Okay, so big picture. We're gonna look at, um, you know, these, these are the three chords we're gonna need to know sort of foundationally, right? We're gonna need a D chord, okay? Your regular standard open D, uh, D major chord, right? Um, now, C add nine is basically going to be this chord, okay? It's the thinnest five strings, third fret, second fret, open, third fret, third fret, okay? And I'll, show you this G next and it's super similar to the C at nine. All you're doing is moving your um, index and middle fingers one string thicker each, right? So it's third, second, open, open, third, third, okay? And one other trick about these chords is that your left ring finger is gonna be on this third fret for all of them, right? For the D, for the C at nine, and for the G, okay? So first get comfortable with these three chords, be able to go back and forth because you'll absolutely need to know these, right? Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is if you look at this chart right here, you're gonna see that um, for each of these three chords, we wanna be able to play, sort of have this melody going for all the chords. Okay, third, second, open, second. I'm talking about frets on the highest E string. So how are we gonna do that? Well, let's look at the D. Put our pinky down to start with. Take our pinky up next, and then take our middle finger off. And then we go back to that central D chord, right? The anchor. So this is a nice sort of circular rhythm exercise on its own, right? Now it's a little bit trickier for the C add nine here because number one is we're gonna have to sort of deviate from the regular C add nine. We don't have enough fingers left to, to sort of take our pinky off of the thinnest E string and then have the second fret played here. So what we're gonna do is use our index finger here. So keep your middle and ring fingers where they would normally go in the C add nine, and then put your index finger on the second fret of the high E string. So we're gonna start with our pinky down, take our pinky off, which makes the second fret on the high E string ring. Okay, so it's third muted. My middle finger is sort of muting that fourth string. Third muted, open, third, second, okay? And we can put our pinky back if we want. Take our pinky off. And you really wanna have this index finger there the whole time because even when your pinky's down, if you take that off, you want this finger to be already in place, right? And then sometimes when you're comfortable with that is take your index finger off, let that thinnest E string ring open, and then put the index finger back. So you hear that, right? Third, second, open, second, okay? And the same thing for the G. All we're gonna change between the C at nine and the G is putting our middle finger on the sixth fret. And in this case, the third and fourth string will stay open. Okay, so these are the, these are the chord shapes. And um, I have these sort of fingering charts as well to show you what this looks like from your point of view when you're playing the chords. So you can find these in the PDF and it's a great way to sort of learn these chords and really make sure your fingers look just like mine do, okay? So that's basically how we're gonna sort of uh, approach the chord building blocks of this. But let's get to the fun part now, which is the riff itself. Okay, so for this basically, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be on each chord for two measures, okay? When I say chord, I mean D or C add nine or G. Even though we're gonna play the variations uh, in total, we're gonna be on that sort of main chord for two measures. That's eight counts total. 
The first count of each chord, we're gonna pluck the bass note of that chord. So for the D, that's the open fourth string, okay? And for the C at nine, that's the third string of the fifth fret. And for the G, that's the third fret of the sixth string, okay? So, uh, the first eight measures then would be this D. We're gonna pluck the bass note, and then we're gonna go from the pinky down to pinky up to open E string to um, second fret on the E string, okay? So. If we were to count it, it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? One more time, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the key is, is we're gonna use that same counting approach for all the chords, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And for the G, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And back to the D. Okay, and in the D here, the basically in the last couple counts, I had this like little turnaround lick where we're basically gonna, we're gonna reset and do the whole thing over again. But I had this nice little bluesy lick just with one finger, uh, middle finger of your left hand, third fret on the fourth string, open fourth string, third fret on the fifth string. And then we're gonna repeat it, go back to the very first um, measure of the whole thing, which is the open D string, okay? So uh, I would start off really slow. Don't worry about the counting just yet. Just kind of get the, the chord switches familiar, right? So. One little trick here is notice how your left ring finger is gonna stay on this uh, third fret of the second string for the entire sequence, the whole thing, right? For the D, for the C at nine, and for the G. And for the final two measures. Okay, that's one little thing, uh, that's a little trick there. Another trick is when you're switching to the C at nine and to the G, you can, it's okay if you're, index finger um, takes a minute to get to this second fret on the high E string. And when I say a minute, I mean, you know, a, a few seconds really, depending on your rhythm. But the point is, is you're not gonna need that, uh, this finger here, until the first count of the second measure of that chord. So you have four counts to do it. And check that, check this out. Check, watch my index finger as I switch from the D to the C at nine. My index finger is in limbo. And that's the strum where it really needs to be there. Same with the G. Okay? It's like if you're in a play or a movie or a play is a better example, and you don't have any uh, scenes until, you know, five minutes in. It's like you don't have to necessarily be ready to jump in when the curtain opens. It's kind of the same deal with this. Is you can switch to that C at nine, and it's okay if your left index finger is a little bit late to the game, right? Now, from here, the thing I would say is you want to add your own strumming as you see fit. And what I mean by that is sort of find the groove. Here's how I like to do it. What I'm doing there is sort of bouncing on the bass note of the chord, right? Instead of playing the D bass note once, I'll sort of do a pulse. Then I tend to do a bass, bass, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, bass, bass, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, bass, bass, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, bass, down, bass, bass, riff.
Okay, so that's basically it. Now again, you could take these chords and play, you know, whether you're playing Can't You See, right? Can't you see? Can't you see? See at nine, what that woman G been doing to me. Back to the D, right? Then turn it around, do it again. Can't you see? What that woman doing to me? Okay, and you can add those little uh, variations I'm doing or not. You can just use straight strumming if you want. And for Led Zeppelin's thank you, it would be, you know, if the sun refused to shine, I would still be loving you. And I got the lyrics wrong, I'm sure. But um, you get you, you sort of hear that hopefully in your head if you know that song, right? And it's not the exact thing that's played in that song, but it's close enough where I wanted to share it because I think it's a little fun little exercise. So um, again, that's going to be it for this lesson. Check out my website, playsongnotes.com to get the PDF. Uh, it's a very handy way to sort of learn this um, exercise outside of this video and, and sort of take it with you. And again, having those, those pictures of the chord uh, finger positions is super helpful as well. But again, just a quick little warm up exercise. Thanks all for watching and uh, look forward to lessons for uh, the Marshall Tucker song and maybe one day the Led Zeppelin song as well. So I'm going to take off now. Bye-bye, my friends. This has been David Potts, and have a great night wherever you are.